Hi, I'm John Graham Cumming, I'm the author of The Geek Atlas, and we're standing in the Royal Institution on Albemarle Street in London. So if you know anything about Idaho in the United States, the first thing that comes to mind is probably potatoes. Um, but there's a very, very important thing in Idaho, which is the experimental breeder reactor one, which is the first breeder reactor ever built. And it's completely open to the public, and you can go see it. A breeder reactor uses uranium-238 uh, rather than uranium-235. Uranium-238 won't actually undergo a chain reaction itself, but it turns out that if you bombard it with neutrons uh, from uranium-235 undergoing a reaction, you can turn it into plutonium, and the plutonium itself will actually undergo the, the reaction necessary to run a nuclear reactor. So to prove that that was actually going to happen, uh, the US built EBR1, Experimental Breeder Reactor 1, and it lit up the nearby town of Arco, Idaho, not long after. It was a very, very small place, uh, but claims to be the first place ever lit under nuclear power. And you can wander around the actual 1950s equipment in there, see the first light bulbs that were lit up by a nuclear reactor, and understand more about the physics of breeder reactors. But actually, I think the most fascinating thing is in the parking lot outside, which is two nuclear aircraft engines. At the time, there was a strategic need to have bombers in the air for a long, long time. This is before the intercontinental ballistic missile was really invented. And so the idea was you needed to get these strategic bombers in the air so you could bomb the Soviet Union whenever you needed to. And keeping them aloft was a problem because you need fuel. So obviously some bright sparks So well, if we put a nuclear reactor on board an aircraft, we could use its heat to blow hot air out the back and make an aircraft engine and make an aircraft that could last for hours, days, months in the air. And so off they set and built these nuclear aircraft engines, which did actually work. They were extremely heavy. Uh, they would have needed an enormous aircraft with a very, very long runway. Uh, they would have irradiated the air coming out of the back of them and the crew. And if there had been an accident with a crash, then there would have been a disaster because you would have had uh, nuclear fuel all over the place. But nevertheless, they did work. And the decommissioned engines actually stand in the parking lot outside EBR1. And they really are a sort of Heath Robinson crazy thing to see because they look like some sort of maniac's pipework invention with space for a nuclear reactor in the middle and then a conventional jet engine which has been ripped apart and put back together again to make this nuclear thing. So all in all, that's a nuclear day out looking at these crazy inventions in Idaho and uh, it's free. So very nice place to go. I'm John Graham Cumming, the author of The Geek Atlas, a new travel book published by O'Reilly.